Why is he handcuffed again? And you heard he was lying on his handcuffs enough that he th thought he was going to break a bone or something, or dislocate his shoulder, so he said something to that effect. Why is he in a prison jail cell with maximum security, with, um, I don't know, violent offenders, other than to humiliate him? Just a little bit of background. I, I've known Arthur Pavlovsky for uh, more than a decade. In fact, I remember when I was at Sun News Network, Justin, I don't know if you remember this, we had something that I called the Freedom Weekend in Muskoka. And, and Jackie came, and David Aiken came, and Brian Lilly came, and uh, Krista Erickson came. It was a wonderful weekend. And we invited our viewers from around the country. It was just Sun News. So I was doing some fun stuff like that. Even in back, So this is, a, I'm, I'm talking maybe 10 years ago now. And um, Arthur Pavlovsky and his brother David came. Can you believe that? They came all the way from Calgary. So, I mean, I've known Arthur even before that. So I've known him for 10 years. Um, and 13 months ago, he was our very first case. He was case 0001 in our Fight the Fines project. And we now, I, I checked with Victoria this morning. She, she says we have about 1,200 cases. So he was absolutely the very first case We had that case, the prosecutors dropped the case, then he got a bunch more tickets and we're defending him on those, and now he's arrested. So we've been defending Arthur, Pastor, Art, Pastor Arthur, for, I've known him for more than a decade, and we've been defending him for more than a year. This is the third cluster of charges we've been defending. So he's actually one of our busiest <laughs> clients. Um, Kian Bexty did a story about him. Sheila Gunn Reed has done stories about him, and now Adam Sos. So he really is a, a fighter in his own way. The lawyer who represented him from the very beginning with us, her name is Sarah Miller, and she's with a, a, a Calgary law firm called JSS Barristers. There are now two or three lawyers from JSS Barristers working on Arthur's work, Arthur's project, plus another criminal law firm that has been, because Sarah, her forte is not criminal law, it's constitutional law and general litigation, and her, her senior partner is just a master at, at litigation and constitutional litigation. But criminal law has its own wrinkles. Criminal law has its own procedures, and if you're not practicing it every day, I don't care how smart you are, you're a civil litigator, you may not know the wrinkles of the criminal side, so JSS Barristers has retained an additional firm to provide that criminal law action. Plus, I should tell you, it's my experience dealing with too many lawyers, that criminal lawyers are ready to go any time of day. I've called criminal lawyers at 11 p.m. because they're used to having their cell phones on in case someone gets in. When do people get in trouble? They get in trouble any time of the day. In fact, there's a lot of trouble that comes at night, you know. So I, I like criminal lawyers and that they're usually good to go. Um, you call a criminal lawyer up at midnight, they'll often get on the file. That's, I know that sounds crazy, but that's, if you get into criminal law, that's your kind of work because the crime happens whenever the police charge you whenever. So we've got a criminal lawyer and I, I, I will not introduce him right now, but I will, um, in due time, we'll introduce that law firm. The reason I tell you that is to let you know how many lawyers we've got. We've got Sarah, who's been working with Pastor Arthur Pavlovsky for more than a year. We've got Robert Hawks of that same firm, and then we've got the criminal law firm. That's a lot of legal firepower. Arthur needs it. They were alerted to that takedown arrest quite quickly, not by the police, but by others. And they immediately went to work on the weekend. And that, that was like early afternoon, so this isn't like a midnight call. It's a daytime call. Okay, let's get on it. A day passed before the police allowed them to talk to the client. That is illegal. That is unconstitutional. Remember, we went through the, the, the Constitution, uh, the Charter of Rights, about uh, um, various rights when you're charged, right to a speedy trial, for example. It's a constitutional right that you be allowed a lawyer and um, imagine holding him for a day without letting him talk to lawyers. And I spoke to Sarah, and I spoke to Hawks, and they, they were, that firm was leaving messages all over town with cops, with the remand center, with 
let us talk to our client. And, and the cops knew that Pastor Arthur was our client. Like I say, Sarah's been representing him for more than a year. Why were the cops not connecting the prisoner with the lawyers? Were they too busy? Outrageous. But, incredibly, Adam Sos managed to get patched through. Uh, you know, he sort of explains it briefly in the video. He, he's patched through and he does a five-minute interview with Pastor Art from prison. Without uh, any commentary, without further to do, take a listen to this five-minute interview between Pastor Art in prison, the Remand Center, Maximum Security, and Adam Sos. Take a look. Hello, Arthur. How are you doing? Hey, Adam. You missed. You missed yesterday. I know. We uh, we we just got the news right after. Um, a colleague happened to pull up right after it happened. So we're uh, we've been keeping up to date. Over a million people have viewed the video of your arrest already. Wow. Wow. Well, here's what happened after the video. I I was thrown like a piece of meat behind the police uh, vehicle. And I had to go for about an hour, hour and a half back of police car, uh, laying down on my and uh, my handcuffs. My hand bruises all over the face, almost broke my uh, my shoulder. Um, so that was until we got to uh, Spy Hill. Then, of course, the processing unit. I was uh, with my brother. We were taken to two different separate cells. Uh, they're not allowing us to sleep. So 24 hours, I can't sleep. The lights are so bright. It's absolutely crazy. Even though other inmates, uh, for example, across from my cell, um, they turn the lights off and he could go to sleep. I don't have that same courtesy. Um, you know, we do not have blankets. We do not have pillows, nothing. Uh, we had to spend the whole day yesterday and the whole night and half a day right now on a concrete, con a cold concrete. So that's the situation here. Um, I was never contacted by a lawyer. Yeah, it's, it's shocking. Uh, the treatment, I'm being viewed here as a monkey in the circus. Uh, from time to time, police will come and just look through the window, or, you know, like a trophy. Uh, but I'm in a good spirit. I'm not going to quit. I, uh, it will not silence me. I'll keep doing what I'm doing because if I don't have freedom, then I have nothing else. If we don't have freedom to worship our God, then what else do we have? All the rights around the world, if you don't have the freedom of religion, all the other rights are disappearing as well. We have to stand up. And Christians, rise up, stand up right now. I mean, if not now, then when? I know that some people don't like me. And I say quite often, don't like me. I'm not here to win a popularity contest, but I'm a pastor that is feeding the poor for 22 years without charging money for taxpayers, without asking for anything in return. And I also pastor another church and people come freely. I don't force anyone to come and listen. People come because they're adults and they want to come. And for that terrible crime, I was handcuffed, roughed, thrown like a piece of meat behind the police van and taken to jail where I am I'm standing because I can't even sit anymore. You know, how long can you sit and lay on the concrete? So I'm walking around the cell waiting for my release so I can file my lawsuits against those people because that's what I want next. I want to start going after those villains. They're villains. They're wicked, evil people. What they're doing is evil. I think Jason Kenya have become his political prisoner because he's afraid of the movement. We have now thousands of people rising up. We have 11 candidates in our own church and more, more are coming. I think they're afraid that we're going to clean the corruption. They're so corrupted and we're talking about corruption and he decided to arrest me as a political prisoner to silence me. But I think the more people will see what's going on, the more people will rise up and we'll have more candidates. And we need to clean our political system. We need to clean the corruption. We have to make those people accountable again. We have to bring back the recall, the real recall, so people can recall their politicians. We have to bring back the referendum so people have back their voice, so they will feel included in the 
main key decision making. Not right, like we have right now, few people are deciding how we are to live and how we are to die. That's unacceptable. I know that there are many Canadians that want their country back as well. Any final word before you head back into your uh, jail cell? Well, I want to tell you, Jesus wins in the end. And when we stand with him, that's where I draw my hope. My, I, my hope is in Christ. He redeemed me. He saved me. He changed the corrupted man into the man I am today. And I give him all the glory. And if you are depressed or suicidal or in a tough situation, remember that God has your back. And we know how the story ends. Truth wins. And God bless you. Thank you so much, Arthur Pilowski. Well, there you have it in the end. Congratulations to Arthur, Pastor Arthur Pavlovsky, for maintaining his courage in prison. Very interesting how he was treated in there. They won't turn off the lights, they, where, whereas they would for other prisoners. Police coming in to gawk at him like he's a zoo animal how he was thrown in the back of the police car with his hands cuffed. Why is his hands cuffed? Is he a violent man? Did he have a weapon on him he was going to use? Why did he cuff him again? Remember, um, he's been charged with no crime. There's some health order that if he's found guilty of, I, I don't even think the word guilty applies because it's not a crime. Uh, if he found liable under, if he's held to be in, in contravention of a body. There's, there's no jail term there. Why is he handcuffed again? And you heard he was lying on his handcuffs enough that he th thought he was going to break a bone or something, or dislocate his shoulder, so he said something to that effect. Why is he in a prison jail cell with maximum security with, um, I don't know, violent offenders, other than to humiliate him? Friends, what you just saw there is a clip from our Rebel News daily live stream show. It's fun, it's fast, and it's completely unscripted, so you never really know what you're going to get. Just go to rebelnews.com slash live